What were the Guardian Protocols of the Jedi Order? Introduced in the comic Shadows of Starlight, they would appear to be a set of mandates the Jedi would follow in times of crisis. During the High Republic, the Guardian Protocols were activated thanks to the threat of the Nile, but they sound very similar to the rules the Jedi put in place during the Clone Wars as well. I believe they are meant to be one and the same. The Protocols were as follows. Acceleration of Youngling Combat Instruction. The Jedi of the High Republic didn't experience violence nearly as often as they did during the Clone Wars or the old Sith Wars. They they were living in a time of peace, and the training of younglings reflected that. While younglings received lightsaber training, it wasn't as aggressive as it was under the Guardian Protocols. For example, the characters of the Young Jedi Adventures held training sabers, but the Guardian Protocols would have worked to advance them into real lightsabers much faster. Outposts staffed by droids. As the Republic ventured into the Outer Rim, Jedi placed outposts across the galaxy. Coruscant was still the primary Jedi temple, but some Jedi Knights or Padawans had never even seen it. During the Nile threat, all Jedi were recalled to Coruscant, some for the very first time. Their outposts were left under the care of droids, and the Outer Rim was largely left without the quick response of the Jedi. It would appear that this change rippled out into the future of the galaxy, and next year's book about the Jedi Council before the time of the Phantom Menace will be about the closing of one of those outposts. Independent research paused. Before the time of the Nile and their nameless creatures who fed on Force users, Jedi were able to explore their own interests. Padawans like Wreath Silas preferred to spend all their time learning in the Jedi archives. But as the Nile gained more power, all Jedi efforts were focused on stopping their enemies, learning about the deadly Shriekere, and finding a way to enter Nile territory through the occlusion zone. Early Padawan Trials. The specific wording here is that Padawans of any age will be eligible to undergo the trials and advance to the rank of Knight. This is an interesting one. We saw in the Clone Wars series, and more specifically the book Brotherhood, that Padawans like Anakin Skywalker were elevated to the rank of Jedi Knight not necessarily because they were ready, but simply because Jedi Generals were needed to lead clone troopers. Nadar Veb and Ascata Karras would be other examples of Jedi Knights promoted too early who struggled during the war. It seems that in general, the Guardian Protocols encouraged rushing Jedi students into places of leadership. Resource Management Restriction. The comic doesn't go deeper into this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Jedi resources will be prioritized for the fight against the Nile. Offensive combat as required. The Jedi Council states here that while we will not seek out violence, there may be opportunities for targeted strikes, which sounds like they're going to be seeking out ways to hurt the Nile, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Star Wars is very much about when is the right time to stand up and fight against those who do harm, but it's interesting to see the Jedi becoming soldiers, an idea that some of its members opposed. I think Star Wars fans are used to seeing the Jedi as warriors because that's largely what the Clone Wars era showed us. But during the High Republic, things were different. There were many different ways to be a Jedi. Finally, no Jedi travels alone. Again, that's self-explanatory and makes sense considering the danger posed by the Eaters of the Force. Those are all of the Guardian Protocols, and I think it's cool that they were likely named for the Jedi Guardian class from Knights of the Old Republic. Jedi Guardians were known for their skills in battle. Like I said, the Guardian Protocols seemed to be a mandate that turned every Jedi into a Guardian or Warrior, for a good reason, to fight against the Nile, but you can easily see how this is a slippery slope. It's stated that the Protocols have been implemented implemented before, and I get the sense that every time it happened, it meant a step backwards for the Jedi. Something like this would take time to philosophically recover from, even if it was necessary. I wonder if some of these mandates were ever fully lifted after the High Republic era, because it just seems like the norm for the Jedi by the time we reach the prequels. I also think it's cool that the Jedi have a set of rules for times of crisis, because that makes them predictable. Like if, oh, say, a secret Sith Lord Senator wanted to manufacture a galactic conflict he would know exactly what the Jedi would do in response. High Republic fans have been guessing from the start of the initiative that we would learn about how the Jedi began to lose their way so that by the time of the Clone Wars, Palpatine would be able to manipulate them right where he wanted them. It was awesome to see exactly that start to happen at the beginning of Phase 3. Shadows of Starlight was a fantastic way to kick it all off. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.